I'm grateful to have these few moments to speak to you and to share a brief reflection inspired by today's readings that speak of the enduring power of Christ and his teaching to sustain us, even in times of chaos, tribulation, and suffering. The Lord's words in today's gospel both challenge and comfort us in this time of crisis for the Church of the United States and beyond. As you may know, the annual fall meeting of our nation's Catholic bishops held here in Baltimore just concluded. From across the nation, leaders of the Church in the United States, bishops together with lay and religious leaders, gathered to address what is unquestionably a crisis with profound implications for the Church. It is a crisis brought about by a systemic failure on the part of some bishops to deal responsibly with criminal behavior from within the church's ranks, a failure that caused great harm to a heartbreaking number of the young and vulnerable. This failure of leadership has created a breakdown in confidence and in trust in those who are entrusted with shepherding the flock of God, especially bishops. Many of you have written to me or have spoken to me of your anguish and anger that such horrific things could happen in our church. As your bishop, I can feel only profound shame for all that has transpired. Clergy who have harmed children and young people gravely violated their calling and in so doing betrayed the trust, the faith they were charged to proclaim, as well as the people they were called to shepherd. Bishops who failed to deal forthrightly with such behavior also violated their calling to protect the flock of God entrusted to their care. Indeed, both the crime and the failure to address the crime have brought the church to a time of chaos, tribulation, and suffering, such as is portrayed in today's gospel. Confident that the Lord loves his church and remains with us always, Confident that the Lord's words do not pass away, even in time of pain and distress, we must commit ourselves to the long and arduous path toward healing. As your Archbishop, I assure you that I will continue to do everything in my power to restore your trust and your confidence in the Church and its leaders, and to do this by pursuing relentlessly with you the work of renewing our church. The listening sessions conducted in parishes across the archdiocese provide a basis for constructive, ongoing, and candid dialogue, while the recommendations you have shared provide a basis for implementing reforms that long have been needed. Some steps have already been taken in the Archdiocese of Baltimore, beginning decades ago to try to prevent these crimes from ever again occurring. Many independent professionals consider these measures among the most rigorous and transparent in the nation, if not the world. Let me emphasize that transparency is not only the rule, but a non-negotiable requirement in any good faith effort to restore credibility. We have adopted rigorous protocols for dealing with any credible allegation against a member of the clergy or a lay employee of the archdiocese. These include 
immediate reporting of all allegations to civil authorities, the permanent removal of any bishop, priest, deacon, lay employee, or volunteer who is credibly accused of abuse against a minor. These same protocols include the oversight of our handling of every abuse allegation by an independent lay-led review board comprised of professionals in the fields of child protection, human resources, civil and criminal law, and church law. Most recently, I have asked the review board to issue an annual report on the handling of abuse allegations by the Archdiocese of Baltimore. The listening sessions conducted throughout the Archdiocese also made it clear to me that many of you are concerned with the recruitment and the formation of future priests. Over time, priestly formation has changed significantly and for the better. This process seeks to ensure that no one will be ordained to the priesthood without the emotional, mental, and spiritual maturity needed for ministry. Further, future priests must have a healthy approach to human sexuality, relate to others wholesomely, and be able to live chaste celibacy fruitfully and joyfully. Of utmost importance is the moral mandate to provide pastoral care for any and all who struggle to survive the ordeal of sexual abuse. Such care includes the provision of professional counseling and a willingness to walk with survivors in their long and arduous journey toward healing. The readings for this Sunday portray a time of tribulation in history and at the end of time. This portrayal, however, should not cause us to lose heart, but rather to take heart. Jesus remains with us through thick and thin and encourages us, even in the midst of impending disaster and great personal trial, even when human beings and institutions fail to remain faithful, to put our trust in God, who alone is always faithful and true, to be steadfast in discipleship, steadfast in our mission to serve the poor, to cherish the lives of the vulnerable, to welcome the stranger, to educate the young, and help those who lack food, housing, and adequate opportunity, those who endure injustice or face a future without hope. In the midst of this crisis, dear friends, let us not forget the poor. Let us not forsake our mission. Jesus makes clear that when the sun is darkened and the moon is devoid of light, when the stars seem to be falling from the very heavens above, it is in holding fast to our faith in him that we are able to see the light, to hope against hope, and to continue witnessing to his loving and abiding presence. As we prepare for the season of Advent, a time of renewed hope in the fidelity of God to all that he has promised, let us not lose sight of the immense goodness within the body of Christ, especially the acts of charity and love. His grace inspires in us and in our fellow Catholics. It is in continuing to hold fast to our faith and in serving the poor in their distress that we are shown the path of life and fullness of joy 
in God's presence. Thank you. Thank you for all the ways you bear witness to God's love in the Holy Spirit. I wish you Christ's abundant blessings, his abiding peace, and inner joy throughout this Christmas season and in the new year soon to come. May God bless you and keep you always in his love.